Good morning, it's Sunday, May the 10th. And on behalf of the elders, I'd like to wish all of our mothers at Walter Hill a happy Mother's Day. Many of you have been asking what are our plans for assembling again as a congregation. So this morning I wanted to give you a brief outline of uh, what our plans are. Tentatively, we are scheduling May the 31st to assemble once again. However, it's not gonna be our normal assembly. Um, in order to mitigate any risk, we're reducing the seating capacity of the auditorium uh, by over half. And what this means is when we start assembling again on the 31st, we're going to do so in two services. Tentatively, and again, I say tentatively because things change every day. And so we're making these plans based on what we know right now. But tentatively, uh, we're going to have a nine o'clock service for care groups one and three, and then we're going to have an 11 o'clock service for care groups two and four. The hour between the two services will be used to sanitize the auditorium and wipe down any surfaces that need cleaning. The elders want to make sure the congregation understands that, that when we do start assembling again, it is not our expectation that everyone will be there. Uh, if you are at an elevated risk, we do not expect you to be there. If you are over 65, you have underlying medical conditions, or you have a compromised immune system, we want you to know that we do not expect you to be there. We will be recording the first service and we'll be posting that on our YouTube channel so you can continue to worship from home. We'll issue a letter this coming week that will explain our plans in a little more detail. Just keep in mind that these plans are based on what we know today and they are subject to change. But this morning as we continue to worship from home, I'd like to start by reading a scripture. Psalms chapter 33, starting in verse 10. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. Let's all worship. Hello, church family. We love you. We miss you. We hope you're all doing well. And I'd like to wish a special Happy Mother's Day to all my Christian sisters. We love you and miss you. We love you so, so much, church family. I miss seeing you. We love you. We miss you. Love you. Love you. Can't wait to see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, Walter Hill. We love you and we miss you. And we can't wait to see you again. Hey, Walter Hill family. We miss you and we can't wait to worship together in person very soon. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day and there are many blessings. We pray that you'll be with us as we're worshiping today. We pray that you'll be with all those that are gathered together in your name. And we pray that we worship in spirit and the truth. And we pray that you'll be with us as we hear the lesson that's presented today and that we will live that out in our lives day by day. We just pray that you'll be with the church today and especially those of Walter Hill that are 
um, dealing with different issues, especially those that are shut in or in the nursing homes that uh, are being a little bit isolated right now. We know that must be uh, really tough right now. We just pray that we can step out and help those people in need. We just pray that you will help us to always uh, believe in you and trust in you and help us to understand that you made a promise that you would get us through any uh, issues if we just uh, continue to believe in you and trust in you. And we are at that situation now, and we should be at all times. And we just pray that, especially at this time, that we can trust you and, and put it in your hands. And we just pray that you will continue to bless us and take care of us always. Be with our leaders. Be with those that are making tough decisions right now. We just pray that you will continue to, to bless them and help them to make the best decision that uh, you uh, see fit. We just go with us always, be with us throughout this day and throughout our lives. It's through Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is Exodus 2, 1 through 6. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman convinced and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him and daubed it with asphalt and pitch, but the child in it and laid it, laid it in the reeds. But the river's banks and his sister stood afar of, off to know what would be done to him. The, then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river, and her maidens walked along the river side with and when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she compa compassion of him. She said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Church welcomes you as our guest and pray that you'll be able to worship with us live and in person one day soon. We've seen more businesses reopen in the last week and more and more products are reappearing on the stores and shelves that have been scarce, such as hand sanitizers. I know we're all excited about less restrictions. However, please remember the coronavirus is still a threat especially to the elderly and to those with certain underlying medical conditions. And that's why gathering in large groups as we do for church services is still inadvisable. We've added a song after the Lord's Supper this morning to give us more time to reflect on our Savior's sacrifice before the closing prayer. You see, we're learning as we go and trying to make our services as realistic as we can. We're worshiping today because it's the Lord's day. But it's also Mother's Day, a day when we honor our mothers, whether they have passed on or still with us. And while we are commanded to honor our mothers every day, I'm thankful we do have a special day set aside just for them. So let me wish you a happy Mother's Day. Most of us reach a point when we finally realize just how much we took our mothers for granted. My mother passed away uh, over a decade ago, and there are still so many things I'd like to ask her almost every week. So be, please be especially thankful for godly moms. Honor your moms as long as you live by the way you live. 
and bless their lives in every way you can. Like Easter 2020, Mother's Day 2020 is another one of a kind, perhaps complete with virtual meals, virtual visits, and virtual hugs. Do you ever look at men and women whom you admire and wonder what their childhood was like? What kind of parents did they have? Often we're really wondering what kind of mother they had. A mother's influence is immeasurable. The adage is still so true, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. For the next few minutes, I want us to consider one of God's greatest leaders and his mother as we consider today's lesson, A Mother's Job. Please don't think that I'm about to define everything there is to being a mother. To tell you the truth, we know so little about Moses' mother, but I believe we can draw some inferences from Scripture to help us honor her. The first job of a mother is to risk her life and health to bring a child into the world. With epidurals and lower infant mortality rates, most Mother's Day sermons are not loaded with this aspect anymore. However, pain still accompanies child's birth as the Lord God promised the woman in Genesis 3 and verse 16. Additionally, mothers know how their bodies were affected by pregnancy and giving birth. But Jochebed, well, let me interrupt this first point for a moment as we name the parents of Moses. From our scripture reading, we know that his mother and father were both descendants of Levi. Turn with me to Exodus 6, verses 14 and following, and we'll discover that Moses and his brother Aaron were great-great-grandsons of the patriarch Jacob. Their father is named in these verses as Amram. Now listen to verse 20 from this passage. Now Amram took for himself Jochebed, his father's sister, his wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram were 137. I know it seems so strange to us, but Amram married his aunt. The genealogy is found in Numbers 26 and verse 15 reveals that Aaron and Moses also had a sister named Miriam. Now back to Jochebed. Not only did she risk her life and health to bear this child, she also risked her life by keeping him alive. Amram and Jochebed disobeyed Pharaoh by keeping their son alive. And unable to keep him hidden after three months, Jochebed placed her baby in an ark made of bulrushes and placed it in the reeds by the river's bank. His sister Miriam stood afar off waiting to see what would happen to her baby brother. He was found by Pharaoh's daughter who rescued him even though he was one of the Hebrew's children. This brings us to the second job of a mother, which is to nourish and nurture her infant. God, in his infinite wisdom, equipped mothers with the capability to feed and nourish their babies. And Jochebed was afforded a unique opportunity to do this and get paid for it, as we read in Exodus 2, verses 7 through 9. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. We cannot fail to see the providential hand of God in this arrangement. Jochebed was able to fulfill her motherly role for nourishing her baby and to further nurture him as he grew. We don't know how long Jochebed got to tend to her son, but it must have been quite a while until he was weaned. The third job of a mother is to love her children. We observe this in Jochebed when she allowed him to live and later placed him in an ark to save him. On the other hand, we easily take for granted that mothers always love their children. However, the demands on wife and mother can sometimes interfere with a mother's devotion to her children. As Paul advised Titus on what to speak that was proper to sound doctrine, he wrote these words in Titus 2, verses 3 through 5. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, 
not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may admonish the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Sometimes those things we take for granted, such as a mother loving her children, must be taught. In slavery with no hope of freedom in sight, loving a child presented problems. Yet Jochebed seemed to be looking ahead to brighter days. And now we come to the fourth job of a mother, which is to teach her child. Earlier I mentioned the adage about the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. This came from a poem written in 1865 by an American poet who was born in Lexington, Kentucky by the name of William Ross Wallace. Allow me to share his poem entitled, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. Blessings on the hand of women. Angels guard its strength and grace in the palace cottage hovel, oh, no matter where the place. Wood that never storms assailed it, rainbows ever gently curled, for the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Infancy's the tender fountain, power may with beauty flow, mothers first to guide the streamlets, from them souls unresting grow. Grow on for the good or evil, sunshine streamed or evil hurled, for the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Woman, how divine your mission here upon our natal sod. Keep, O oh keep, the young heart open always to the breath of God. All true trophies of the ages are from mother love impearled, for the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Blessings on the hand of women. Fathers, sons, and daughters cry, and the sacred song is mingled with the worship in the sky. Mingles where no tempest darkens, rainbows evermore are hurled, for the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. I know it is difficult to catch all the beauty in a poem as it's read to you, and I hope you'll look this one up later and, and read it slowly because it is so powerful and so true. Put simply in another adage, as the twig is bent, so grows the tree. Mothers, you wield a powerful hand in shaping the direction your children will take in life. Of course, the wise man Solomon wrote the proverb that captures this, Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The Apostle Paul instructs us to bring children up in the training and admonition of the Lord, Ephesians 6 and verse 4. As I thought about this lesson, I, I jotted down several things godly mothers teach their children starting at an early age, and sometimes unintentionally. The difference between right and wrong, love, manners, kindness, respect, sharing, heritage, importance of family, love for the Lord, and so many other things. Many of these are things they can learn before they are two years old. And if you doubt this, see what these little ones learn in our nursery and cradle roll classes by the time they are two. And the final job of a mother is to let the child go. This may be the most difficult task facing mothers whether it is for college or the workforce or marriage. Parents must recognize when their children reach adult status and let them go. Allow them to take full responsibility for themselves. For example, when your child gets married, you don't need to interfere in their marriage. I'm not saying this is easy, but it's necessary unless there are abuse or serious neglect issues involved. I'm not going to spend much more time on this one except to give one scripture as an example. Genesis 2 and verse 24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined, shall cleave or hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Would it be safe to assume that the wife has left her father and mother? 
When marriage takes place, a new home begins separate from the parents of both bride and groom, generally speaking. I always get in trouble on this subject because there are always exceptions to children leaving home as, as, as adults. But I believe one of the major duties of parents is to raise children prepared to be responsible adults in marriage or the workforce. This is one of the major reasons for this ranking of priorities, God first, spouse is second, and children last. Because generally your children are gonna grow up and leave you, and then you're left all alone with your spouse. And the last job is traditionally harder for mothers to let the child go. Using Jochebed as her mother of the day, we've looked at five jobs of a mother. And before you protest, fill in the blanks. A woman's work is, a woman's work is never done. It would be impossible to list all the jobs of a mother, but we've chosen five from the mother of Moses to illustrate. By defying Pharaoh's orders, we can certainly see how Jochebed risked life and health as she brought Moses into this world. And secondly, by the providence of God, Jochebed was able to nourish and nurture her young son and got paid for doing so. And there's no question that Jochebed loved her son as she spared his life at birth and then did everything in her power to keep him alive. And fourthly, she taught her child. We make this inference from decisions her son made later in life. Choices not likely to have been instilled by Pharaoh's daughter. Where did he learn of his heritage and love for his people? Where did he learn about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Turn with me to Hebrews 11, verses 23 through 26, as we read of the faith of Moses' parents and of Moses himself. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. You see, only Jochebed could have instilled faith in the Lord God of Israel in her son, just like Timothy's mother and grandmother did in him. And finally, Jochebed let her son go, once in the ark and once after weaning him. I know this was much earlier than is customary, but Moses had learned well on his mother's knee. As we honor our mothers on this Lord's day, let's also honor Jochebed for passing her faith on to her son, named Moses by his adoptive Egyptian mother. In the process, may we glorify the God who created motherhood and sent his only son to earth, born of a woman. This has not been a lesson on how to become a Christian, so let me just provide this reminder. We know from John 3:16 that we must believe in Jesus as God's only begotten son to be saved. Luke 13, 3, Acts 2, 38, and 2 Peter 3, verse 9 stress the necessity of repentance for salvation. Matthew 10:32. Acts 8, 37, and Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, point to the need for confession and salvation. In Mark 16, 16, Acts 2, 38, and 1 Peter 3, 21, make it clear that baptism is a requisite for salvation. And if you've never taken these steps to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, may, may I encourage you to study and prayerfully consider doing so. If you've not been faithfully serving in the Lord's kingdom, let me encourage you to get back in a right relationship with God. And if we can assist you in obeying God's will, please contact us through our website at www.walterhillchurch.com. To our Walter Hill family, these are strange times, but if you have any spiritual needs, please contact your elders or ministers. We are here to help in any way we can. And until next week, stay safe, and may God bless you. Will you bow with me as we pray, considering our collection or contribution to the Lord? Our Father, 
we thank you so much for loving us more than we can fully comprehend. You've given us everything. You've given us your son. As we reflect upon the spiritual blessings that you've provided to us, we are thankful that you have given us the opportunity to express the depth of our love to you as we remember to give in our worship to support the work of the church. We pray that we do so willingly, cheerfully, and purposefully. And we ask your blessings upon the gift and upon the givers. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you bow with me as we remember our Lord in communion? Father, we're grateful for the opportunity that we have to assemble around your son's table. As we partake of this bread, we pray that you will bless it, that it will bring to our memory the tremendous sacrifice that he made on our behalf in giving of his body on that cruel cross of Calvary and being subject to such punishment and persecution unjustly when it should have been us. We're thankful for his sacrifice and we remember and express our love to you in partaking of this memorial feast today. We ask your blessings upon this bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's bow as we pray before partaking of the cup. Father in heaven, we continue our thanks to you for this fruit of the vine. As we partake of it, we pray that you bless it and bring to our memory the blood of Christ, the precious blood of Christ, which makes it possible for our sins to be washed away, for our souls to be cleansed, we recognize, Father, our need of a Savior and that He, Jesus, is the only one that could provide that sacrifice for us. As we partake of this, we pray that we do so in a proper way and remembering His blood. In Jesus' name, amen.
together. Our loving God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the opportunity to meet together by technology and to offer worship unto you. We pray, Father, that our worship has been pleasing. We pray, Father, that as we enter this next week that you will look after us and guide us and help us to find opportunity to help others. We pray, Father, that you will forgive us of our shortcomings. We thank you for Jesus and his love, and it's in his name we pray. Amen.